What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of BTB RV Rant. Let's dive straight into the questions. So the first question comes from a viewer who currently has a Cyclone Toy Hauler, a 4115. They're looking at getting a Grand Design Solitude 390 RK. They are asking if the axles on this Solitude are going to be enough to support the entire weight of the trailer, given the fact it has twin 7,000 pound axles and the gross vehicle weight rating is 16,800 pounds. Well, if you factor in hitch weight, which is going to be about 3,000 to 3,300 pounds. When you remove that from the gross vehicle weight rating of 16,800 pounds, it's really only going to leave you about 13,500 pound max that you're ever going to have directly above the axles. So you should be in pretty good shape so long as you don't overload your fifth wheel. In most cases, you're probably going to run a little bit light, so you're probably only going to have upwards of about 13,000 pounds resting over the axles. So you shouldn't have anything really to worry about. Axles are generally rated to have about a 20% buffer in terms of capacity. The next question comes from a viewer who is asking if you can add the fifth wheel gooseneck puck system to a truck that didn't come with it from the factory but had it as an available option. And the answer is iffy. Generally you can, but if you look at some of the newer trucks on the market like the new Ram, part of that hitch assembly is actually welded on. So proper installation by an actual manufacturer's dealership would be highly recommended and really if you want to have any type of peace of mind that it was done correctly, you'd probably even want to have to get it inspected when you're done to make sure that all the welds were done properly and it was correctly put in place. So the next question comes from a viewer who has never owned a diesel pickup truck before and he's looking at getting his first. And after watching several videos I've done on the F-250, he wants to know if that's the one I would recommend. In my opinion, it's whichever one you like best. They all look dramatically different from each other. You can get a truck from Chevy that looks different from a truck from GMC and Ford and Ram will both follow suit. They all have their own unique differences to them and they all have differences in terms of the interior as well as how they feel when you're driving them. So you really just have to stop by all the dealerships, spend time in them, find the things that you like about one versus another. They're all going to require the same maintenance in terms of, you know, changing out your fuel filters and making sure that you add DEF. You're going to have to maintain them pretty much identically. They're all going to be very reliable now, so you really don't have to worry so much about diesel engine failures or problems with the diesel engine, so long as you maintain them and you put quality diesel fuel in. So really just spend time at the dealerships. Enjoy driving them around and pick which one you like the best. The next question comes from a viewer who is looking at purchasing a new Ram 3500 Dually with a Jayco Pinnacle 36 FB fifth wheel. They currently have a Toyota Tacoma pulling a Keystone 23 RB and they just want some input. They want some advice on what to expect. Well, you are really going up in terms of truck. You are going to be getting a truck that weighs probably twice as much as your Tacoma, if not more than that, as well as a trailer that weighs is significantly more than what you currently tow. So what you really have to keep in mind are the differences between stopping, turning, maneuvering, and really your visibility because it's all going to change. It's going to be different. You'll also have to learn the differences in owning a diesel pickup truck versus a gas pickup truck, primarily because you're going to need to add DEF to your truck, which is diesel exhaust fluid. You'll also need to understand when you need to maintenance and service your truck and the transmission because they're also going to be at different intervals. You really are going to have a different experience, but I don't think it's going to be so different that you won't be able to adapt to it quickly. And overall, you're going to be set up for a good towing experience overall because you're going to see the difference in towing a travel trailer versus a fifth wheel, especially when it comes to sway. So the next question is an interesting one, and it's related to the differences between a full-time warrantied RV versus one that's not. Now, just because an RV is warrantied for full-time usage doesn't mean that it's automatically going to cover anything that fails in that period of time. Typically, a warranty period is going to be anywhere between one year to about three years on certain components, and other components might be much less than that. And you need to keep in mind that just because an RV is rated for full-time usage or warrantied for full-time usage does not mean that every component inside of it is going to meet that same criteria. You could have a tire failure, you could have an axle failure, you could have a lighting issue or a wiring issue, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're automatically going to be covered for repair just because 
your specific RV is designed to be lived in or warranted to be lived in full time. Just like when you buy your house, if you have a light bulb that goes out, it doesn't necessarily mean your light bulb is covered under the homeowner's warranty. So you want to be very careful in terms of understanding what the marketing message is behind that versus the real message. When it comes down to it, most of them are still built the same. If you look at most of your full-time warrantied fifth wheels, they're going to be built very similar to non-full-time warrantied fifth wheels. There are a few that stand out from the bunch in terms of build quality and construction. Some of those might be DRV or Lux or New Horizon, which are more of a custom line, even though you can get those very much in a kind of a cookie cutter design. However, when you're looking at your traditional models, and those are going to be the ones that usually fall under that $125,000 price tag, I would say between about $80,000 and $125,000, they're going to be built very, very similar to models that aren't rated for full-time use. So you are paying more, and part of what you're paying for is the marketing terms around an RV being claimed to be full-time usable, as well as warrantied for full-time use. And then one final thing to remember about any warranty with an RV, it's only as good as so long as you meet the maintenance criteria for whatever component is being warrantied. So if you don't maintain your roof, if you don't maintain your seals, if you don't maintain the component, you void the warranty. So you do need to understand that aspect of your warranty as well, even if your RV is claimed to be warrantied for full-time use. So the last question comes from a viewer who is considering purchasing a 2019 GMC truck that is heavily discounted, or should he wait for a 2020 model that may not have any discounts yet. Basically, have the improvements to the 2020 model made it worth it, even if you're not going to get it at a discounted price. And that's all going to come down to a few things. First of all, do you care about all of the technology that they've added in terms of camera angles, camera features, as well as RV integratable features? Basically, do you care that you can now integrate the MyGMC application into the in command system on some travel trailers or RVs. If that's not a big deal to you or the 15 camera angles isn't a big deal to you, then that might be a piece of technology that you don't care about having. If that's the case, you don't need the 2020 model. Secondly, is the rear seat legroom that important to you as well? The 2020 model is going to give you roughly three to four inches additional legroom in the back seat for any passengers you might have back there. And if you do have passengers in the back seat, that is a significant amount of space for them versus the 2019 model. And then finally, if you are a big fan of the multi-pro tailgate feature that you can get on the GMC truck, then that's also something that you can't get on a 2019 model. If you are basically one of those people that has to have all the latest technologies and convenience features, then the 2020 model is going to give you a lot of that. Whereas the 2019 model is still going to give you a lot of tech and a lot of features, just nowhere near as much as the 2020. You know, so it really just comes down to what you're specifically looking for. Keep in mind the 2019 is going to have a bigger hit depreciation wise as well simply because it is an outgoing body style and that's a huge thing to consider because even though you may not get the discounts on the 2020 model you're also not going to get the depreciation hit that you would get of a 19 model of course any vehicle is going to take a hit in terms of depreciation the minute you drive it off the lot but these are still things to consider anyways guys that's going to wrap it up for this episode of btb rv rants if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel big truck big rv we'll talk to you soon.